I know, we all lost a lot of confidence in the Bank of Canada after they didn't keep the word about not hiking interest rates until into 2023. But since the first rate hike, we've actually seen a lot of bold moves coming from the Bank of Canada. And specifically, they're aiming right now for a very narrow platform of a soft landing and their forward guidance in their latest monetary policy report still make this look like the expected case. Now, the big question remains, will we actually see the soft landing or are we in for something worse? Well, we took a deep dive into all of the latest data and we're actually pretty hopeful. And so I'll be diving into our analysis in this video. But before I do, check this out. This is a heads up that you can get our complete Toronto real estate investing guide for free on our website. You can see things like a breakdown of typical costs, rents, appreciation, sample financials that you can change up to see how it affects your returns and even try out a quiz to see what might fit you best. I'll put a link to the free guide in the description below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss other content like this made just for real estate investors in Toronto. First, let's define what a recession is. Generally speaking, a recession happens when we see inflation come down, but at the cost of significant decline in economic activity with at least two quarters of negative GDP. When that happens, we usually also see high unemployment rates, business closures, a decrease in consumer confidence, and a lot of negative consequences that the BOC wants to avoid. And so instead, the Bank of Canada aims to get to a narrow soft landing situation where inflation will come down. And even though the economy slows down in growth, it won't get so bad that we'll see major job losses and trigger a recession. And this goal was the reason behind the first 100 basis point jumbo rate hike that happened back in July of 2022. And this was the very first bold move from the Bank of Canada since they were the first of the group of seven central banks to lead this movement. Next, we saw another bold move where they signaled a pause in rate hikes last month in January of 2023. Now, the Fed certainly wasn't as confident to say this, and Jerome Powell even touched on the fact that he's not as confident as the Bank of Canada during their press conference on February 1st. We are seeing a lot more explicit forward guidance now from the Bank of Canada and their projections are getting more bold and concrete. And according to Andrew Kelvin, Chief Canada Strategist with TD Securities, this is actually making the Bank of Canada more believable. And here's his quote. I have to believe they have a higher than normal conviction with their forecast moving forward to be this comfortable giving such explicit forward guidance. So what kind of forward guidance is the Bank of Canada giving? Well, let's check out the first and most important thing, which is that disinflation is starting and the Bank of Canada expects it to continue into the first half of 2023. In fact, if you compare the latest January 2023 report to the last October's report, things are definitely getting better than previously projected. We're seeing a lot more certainty on the supply side with China reopening from COVID-19 restrictions, which helps to continue to ease supply chain issues. Oil prices are coming down, commodity prices are coming down, demand for goods is slowing because of higher interest rates, and all of these factors are helping to slow down the price of goods and food. Now, even on the shelter side, although prices haven't come down yet, it is also projected to slow down into Q2 of this year. And now this leaves the toughest one to predict from the inflation side, which comes from services because they actually depend more so on our local labor market, which is still very tight. Now, the BOC hopes that with higher interest rates, household spending will slow down here soon too. And when you combine this with high productivity improvements, we should see wage growth slow down here too. The thing is, service data tends to lag goods. And so at this point, this is probably the biggest wild card. And this is what might end up throwing off inflation projections. But if everything goes as planned, the VOC is telling us that we will see the soft landing. With inflation forecasted to come down to 2.6% by year end of this year, 2023, and then back down to 2% by year in 2024, plus very low GDP growth, but not negative, this is the very narrow soft landing that we thought was unlikely 
and it really hinges on where the services inflation goes, and that really depends on where the tight labor market situation goes. Right now, we are pretty hopeful, and it's not just us. The very pessimistic BMO has upped their chance of seeing a soft landing from 20 to 25% to now 30%. TD also sees a higher chance of a soft landing here in Canada, and globally, Goldman Sachs thinks that the US is more likely to see a soft landing now that China is reopening. We're seeing falling inflation already, and there's a milder winter in Europe. Even the Fed is saying that it's now definitely a possibility, even though they previously said that higher unemployment is needed. And the White House is chiming in as well, saying that it is the likely case in the US. Just be mindful that this is the expected case now, and the BOC makes it clear that we might see more rate hikes because things are just pretty unpredictable these days. But right now, the market is pricing in rates holding stable for the next while and then coming down afterwards. So bringing this back to real estate investing, if we see shelter and rents stabilizing soon, energy prices continuing to come down, all of this should give real estate buyers more confidence. We do expect Q2 to be a bit different because sellers who have been holding back will need to sell soon, and the pent-up demand since Q4 of last year also needs to get flushed out. But after all of this, real estate prices should stay a lot more stable in the second half of 2023. And then once interest rates start to come down, combined with more housing demand from population growth, we should see real estate prices resume a slower but steady upward trend in 2024. We understand that in this more uncertain market, there's a lot to think about. So if you're thinking about buying real estate this year or planning your real estate roadmap for 2023, we're happy to chat. We're a real estate sales brokerage that focuses on investing in houses and multifamily homes in Toronto. And here's how it's like to work with us. First, we'll do a discovery call with you so we get to know each other more and help you get your financing ready. And then we'll teach you how to analyze deals. Once you're set, our sales team will work with you to find the best opportunities on the market and eventually help you buy the best one for you. Houses typically need a bit of renovations and will help you with a detailed scope of work and contractor connections. And then once you're ready to run out the place, we also have leasing and property management services if you need it. So if you want to learn more about any of this, just head over to our website at the link down below. Again, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and look for us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you want to hear from us more regularly. You can also head over here to check out our other videos. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.